What is not to smile about there? Wow, wow. That's however, Ugh, not fun. Neither's a nutcracker. <laughs> I'm telling you now, guys, if you ever have a moment, have a day where you're feeling really shitty. Everything seems a bit on top of you. Everything tonight seems like it's just closing in. Just go out on your own. If you've got a bike, get on your bike. If you like driving your car, get in your car. And drive somewhere out where there's just nothing. There's nothing but you and a view. And just, just breathe it in, man. I'm telling you now, it sounds really hippie-ish, but it really, really does reset you and make you just expand on, on that little enclosed view that you've got yourself trapped in at that moment in time. Hmm. Anyway, hope that helps, guys. Now then. <laughs> How are we doing? <laughs> Power Rangers here. How are you? Try not to smash yourself on the helmet. How are you? Good. What's up guys and welcome to a slightly damp, but now dry and kind of balmy, mate. It's bloody balmy. Um, day in the UK with us. We have some friends coming over, one of my old friends from school, one of my best friends from school, John, who now lives in, I want to say, the Bon Paris, but that just means the good Paris, and it's something different. I can't think what it is. <laughs> so if you know what that saying is, it means like, the beautiful Paris, something blah, 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 Paris. The Bobster has been busy prepping, and we're going to actually find the barbecue up, because we've got a couple of hours without rain. So we're going to enjoy it, because it is pretty warm, even though it's a bit wet. But the test of the day is, Brew time. Mm. I'm gonna put you down here. I'm gonna attempt to cook this absolute behemoth. This is a tomahawk steak. And Muscle Food sent us this, we didn't know it was coming. And it is the most Flintstone looking steak cut I've ever seen. It's it's pretty comical. And I thought, yeah, well just Google how, how you cook this. Can't be that, can't be that difficult. Yeah, no, it's not that easy. Apparently you have to do a two-way heating process or some nonsense and flip it every five minutes for like 10 to 15 minutes, sideways, back to front, up and down. Then you have to wrap it and then you have to sear it. <sighs> so, that's what we're gonna try and do. Apparently we've got to keep one side hot and then this side cool. And you put that bit on the cool side for a little bit for 10, 15 minutes to like slowly cook it or something or other and then you sear it. I'm gonna need more of these. So all we've done so far with this is put some seasoning on it, some salt and pepper. That's what they said was the best thing to do. So that's what we've done. Ah! And then, oh my God, it's so big, Lainey. I can't even shut the lid because it catches the shelf. It's gonna have to go on the shelf. That is ridiculous. All right, time is on. I am guarding the area. This is my zone. Please do not pass without a treat. Or I'll, I will have your ankles. Now, treat. Hello there. If you have any spare biscuits, would you all please mail them to Roxy at thebiscuitfactory.com. Cheers. So, would there be any of this there barbecue meat for the likes of me? I would also like some. I would shadore the meat. Oh, I heard a noise. I will go guard. This is my valley. Do you hear me, world? Oi, bloody hell. I'll show them. I'll get them all. You come up here into my land. Nobody shall come into our land. We shall defend it with the honour of the baguette. Yeah, I can see. It's all she knows, really. Like she's 
How's life, Bailey? Ah, oh, c'est très difficile. Finding the crummy and the barking at the, the noise for anything. It is very tiring. What do you do to relax, Bales? Ah, uh, j'adore uh, chewing on, uh, how you say, your trainer? Yes, you did. You ate some limited edition Nikes, didn't you? Maybe. Do you feel even slightly guilty about it? Eh, yeah. no. Okay, the final, final turn before apparently we have to sear it. There we go. Smells good. Okay, so time is up. So that's been kind of done now. But what we're going to do now is rest it now rather than at the end. What happens then is you can enjoy it hot from the grill. So that goes in there to rest. And then we sear it on a really high heat when it's ready to be eaten. In theory, it should be okay. In theory. <laughs> so I was having a think while making this. Most of my friends set, most of my like clique of people, are all really kind of a bit nuts. Let's say, when we were all at school, we were all the ones that kind of got in the report cards, you know, that we do well, but we're easily distracted and all things like that. But literally everyone I know who was like me have all gone on to do some really cool stuff. I'm, a bit, I'm unique doing the YouTube thing and, and all that. Obviously with the fitness side of things, that was always a big part of my life. So to be able to do this for a living has been awesome, but it's kind of part and parcel in the fact that I'm also quite risk taking and I don't really care about failure. So I've always just gone for things. I've taken the jumps and taken the risks. And a lot of my friends are like that, like John, he went quite a solid route, so he went through teaching and to do everything and to obviously qualify as a teacher, primary school. And you think, well, how can you be a bit crazy with that? Well, I'll tell you. What he did is he went and taught a, a kind of a school that had troubled kids there, and he absolutely nailed it. Got a glowing report. He then met his now wife um, in on a surfing holiday in France. He then applied to for a job over in France with this glowing reference from the job that he did well in England and he now teaches in an English speaking school in Paris which is really prestigious and a really great job and he absolutely loves it and all that from what would seemingly be like a normal kind of good solid job route yet because of his personality and because of that outgoingness to want to try and risk things he's now teaching in Paris loving life and, and living over there full-time and they just uh, just found out they're having a kid and he just found out he's a baby boy how cool is that? It's arrived now. They're all first time on YouTube. There's John, the mental teacher I was talking about before. Looks looks all kind of classy and professional. I am. Nutter, nutter. <laughs> and that's Mike, Catherine, and Viv. Say hello to YouTube. Hello, you? hello, hello. <laughs> Stop giving away my bad housing secrets of leaving clothes over. Anyway, so, right, so we're going to sear this now on a high heat, turning it after a minute or so, so we're going to pump that in there and that's going to pump up to about 500 degrees. Done. Good job, Bailey. High five. Sue chef. Good job. Right. Rocks. Got some carrot. Bailey, carrot. Up you go. Go, go, go. Whoa. Good girl. together so catch it in the next clip right dude thank you very much have a great holiday relax 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 otherwise you'll come back and you'll need another holiday <laughs> right, so there we are styles harris even coming in for me in the morning you can see the shop's actually shut because he was going away so he's fixed my beard and my hair i love my friends so just following up on what I was um, what I was saying before about myself and my kind of semi nutty friends, everyone I know who is still you know in my life and doing really well, we all have that similar kind of I don't know personality. I guess everyone has their specialty areas. Everyone has those those learning curves that they love and the learning curves that they hate. So I wasn't I wasn't by any means a perfect student in school. If I enjoyed something, I excelled at it. If I didn't enjoy it. It never brought the best out in me. But what I never did was quit. Never ever did I quit. So and I apologize guys if you can't see, the rains are now coming down and I'm in leathers. 
son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. If, even if something doesn't interest you, even if something doesn't bring out the best in you, never quit. Always make sure that you just, you know, the, the do the best that you can do and concentrate on what you're good at and make sure that you absolutely smash what it is you love. Because your exams and, and things like that, they start off very generalized. You're doing every subject across the board and all you need to do is get from that one stage through to the next stage. It's rare that people ever really look too far back at you. It's always about what you've just done. So once you get through kind of, in England, we have a thing called GCSEs. Once you get through those and you get through to A-levels, all that happens is the GCSEs get you through to the college to get your A-levels done. And nobody really cares about what you've done in your GCSEs after that. It's all about the A-levels. Then after you get through your A-levels, you go through into the degree. And after you've done your degree, nobody cares about the A-levels anymore. So don't worry, don't panic too much. Excel. Put the best into the areas that you know you will excel at. Put your best into those and make sure you work hard in the other areas to balance the scales so that you're able to follow the path that you want to at the next stage. Like I said, when I went to university, oh my God, the heavens have opened up again. Ah, fuck you, England. It's July. July in England. What the hell? <laughs> this is supposed to be our summer. This is supposed to be summer. Oh. Basically, what I'm saying is, there is always, always a path which you can take that will bring out the best in you. Not everything that you do will be the best at. That's the fact. You're not going to be the best at everything you do. But if you concentrate on what you really love and what you really want to do, there will always be a path for you to choose. Like when I was at university, there were modules which I knew I wasn't going to do well at, 100%. Plant-based modules, I hated them. So, knowing that, knowing that one of my modules I might not even pass, I went and talked to the head of year, and together we worked out, because universities modulate their own curriculum effectively on, on how they score it, I ended up taking an extra module. So yes, it was more work, but by taking that extra module, if I did happen to do really badly in the one I knew I wasn't going to fare well in, I had this other module which I was able to do on top of the other work as extracurricular activity and put that in place of the one that I may fail at. So what I did was I took something that I liked and I did more work in that field to help cover the downfall that might be in the areas where I knew that me personally I'd struggle in. And that's what I mean. There is always a pathway. There is always an avenue for success for you guys. Always, 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 always. You just have to work for it and look for it. Little thing to think about. Let's go hit the gym. chest inclining on the chest dumbbell press you can see it's only light 22 kilos so that's on 20 it was a little bit light this is my second to last exercise on seven to last set on this one and what you can see is I'm following I'm doing that thing I told you about setting and fixing imbalances so my left side suffered impingement which damaged it so now I follow my right side down with my left and then I follow my left side up with my right my right is my strong side and what that does is it makes the weak side work properly it's a really great way of dealing with it if you don't have a spotter if you have a spotter as far as your job is to catch this stuff. Anyway, 15.55, crazy pump, using the PSI pre-workout, so you're gonna see me fill out during this workout. So I'm gonna be nitrogen filled and get there. That LRG is gonna start kicking in. Fifteen five five. so that's 15 start reps, three seconds break, holding the weight, five more reps, three seconds break, break, holding the weight, five more reps. This is all about focus and intensity. It's not about the weight. Whatever creates overload in that rep range, that's all you need. If you're new to this and you're just getting started, on your later sets, I do five sets for every exercise that I do. I do two exercises per body part and up to three body parts on a session. If you're new to this and your cardio isn't there or the burns there, you get over pumped, on your last two sets or your fourth set if you don't go to five, you can do 10, three, three, that's fine. Just build up, but get at least three sets of 15, five, five. Yeah. 
There's more chance of a bullet coming back to the gun favorite ways of actually using the pec deck if you have an issue with overstretching the shoulders gripping in the pads instead of driving with your elbows is a really really great way of mimicking that fly but like I showed you there on that second round you can also incorporate the traditional one during the last two five five sets it's whatever you feel like doing this is all about concentration and overload if you like the variation put some variations in on those five fives personally I like to keep it kind of strict in the same all the way through unless I'm really beginning to pump out or tire five sets two exercises sizes on chest 15 five, five that's 25 reps on every single set like I said if you start to struggle you can switch up those grips in the five five sections but the main thing throughout the whole of that chest session if you go back and look is two things chest is up and my stomach is vacuumed the entire time and at no point do I ever dip my chest or allow my shoulders to roll forward they are two major things that people do and four things all together that can completely improve and rectify issues that you might have with imbalances, leading sides, weaker versus stronger, it will fix them all. If you need to reset during the sets because you go out of form or you lose a technique, that is absolutely fine. When I first started doing this, I reset every three or four reps to keep this shoulder behaving. And as you can see, hopefully from these reps now, I'm pretty well balanced. There's still a little bit of impingement here, but I have zero pain and I've had zero injuries for around about seven months now. So underhand grip triceps, one of my favorite, favorite movements because it alleviates a lot of pressure from my elbows. What I'm looking for here is chest up, shoulders back, vacuum stomach. I'm gonna clear my hips out of the way so that when I extend down, I'm not smacking into my legs. What I'm looking for here is a final contraction point with my arms at a slight angle here. What I don't want to be is contracting down here and it goes onto the elbow. So if I keep the arms at an angle here, the load stays on the tricep. Little handy hint there. Let's crack on 15, five, five, five sets. Sets to go. That's five sets down, another five to go. Check out this next one. This is one of my favorite ones I found out. See, it took a bit of a while to adjust there to get the feeling, but what I ended up with is elbows by the ears, driving out. Imagine you're doing skull crushes. That's what you're going to be thinking here, but it's basically a standing skull crusher. So there you have it, a couple of unique exercises for chest and triceps as well as some fundamental ones. With a couple of small adjustments, you can make a really, really effective exercise every single session, every single set, every single rep. Let's move on, let's get some core work done. Okay, so you up some ab work, so we're doing flutter kicks for 10 seconds counting in your head and then you're following that up with five reps of straight leg, leg raises, three seconds rest and then five straight leg leg raises. I'm going to do between five and seven sets of this because I'm running out of time in the gym so I'm just going to literally go on this and kill it. When I get really tired I'll show you how I vary the exercise so I can just keep going. So we're five sets deep, 
And now I'm starting to go, my hip flexors are starting to burn out, but I want to carry on. So I want to try and still get that 10.55 range in there, and still trying to wait at 10 seconds. So, also, a lot of you are saying that sometimes your shoulders will start hurting when you're doing like these hanging kind of leg raises and things. I'm going to show you an alternate grip to how I was holding it before that can help alleviate that issue. Let's go, last one. So there you go. In that set, I include two variations of the flutter kicks. One was the cycles, and two was the rotating knee raises. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't do those normally in one set. I'd choose one or the other, but I wanted to show you when we're running out of time now. I'm gonna quickly smash one last set. I actually started to get a cramp right here in my lower ab. So I know I've hit these to near failure now. So I hope this has really helped you guys. I'll see you back at home. Just that one low rub just went. <laughs> the stuff I do for YouTube. <laughs> oh. Oh, right, I'm done. <laughs> so back home and rudely forgot to include you in my demolition of Lainey's protein cookies. These will be up on her channel. If it's up by the time this video's up, I'll link it here. If not, make sure you run over to Lainey's channel and check out her Kitchen Diaries. I will link that playlist up here for you guys. So I'm going to enjoy this. I hope you enjoyed that workout. I hope it helps you add a few little adjustments to what you already do. A lot of the basics and a lot of the foundations are absolutely spot on as they are. All you need to do is maximize your potential when you are doing them. So hopefully all these little adjustments and little fine tuning that I'm able to impart through these videos will help you take an exercise that you've previously done for a long period of time and maybe plateaued at, and again, create those what once were like the newbie gains and get those back and start feeling it in the correct areas again, rather than letting some of the other muscles, subsidiary muscles come in and take over where they shouldn't be, especially on chest movements where a lot of people let the shoulders come in and dominate. So the main things remember to take away from that workout was the four things. One, keep the vacuum. What you want to be doing is pulling your stomach in and up. Just that little bit and holding it there so you're holding your core tight. By doing this every single time when you're doing all these lifts, you're also working out your abs and working out your core. So it's gonna benefit you in the long run, not only in your posture, but in the way your core looks. Two, keeping that chest up and not dipping it at the top of the movement. When people press, you'll see it, look around the gym next time when people do chest, they get to here and then they do this. And they dip here to get that weight that little bit higher, which in fair play is admirable because they're trying to get the weight higher, but they're taking away from the exercise and what they're doing is displacing the load and putting it onto the shoulders and also the joints, not good. Three. Making sure that you're keeping your shoulders back and relaxed but stabilized. Whether it's up and down or back to front, either way, what you're doing is changing the pivot point of the movements. You're changing the leverage points of the movements by allowing that joint to move. You need to be able to learn to hold the shoulders back, keep your chest up, but maintain this is a relaxed posture rather than squeezing to hold them back because that's not gonna allow you with a proper range of movement. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And my number four, the chin tuck. What I mean by that, I have a tendency when I lift to do this. I don't, I don't do this every time, but what I do is drop my head and leave it there. And what that does is automatically brings tension, into, tension into my neck, brings my traps in. I want to, I want to remove that. So by standing tall, my chest up, my shoulders back, I bring my chin in and I stand tall. And again, I'm relaxed, but I'm keeping my chin here. And what that's gonna do is stop me wanting to round off and round forward. And you'll see it, everyone has this tendency to start coming forward when things get difficult. Even doing it on a bench, you'll see people start lifting their head. 
mm, pressing with that. It's a natural thing. Don't be ashamed if you do it, everyone's done it. But just correct it. Take what you are good at, what you excel at, and make yourself better. That's all for now, guys. Again, thank you for joining me. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. Smash that thumbs up, in fact. Even if you don't like me, hit it. Be ironic. Oh, following videos, I'm gonna be doing two videos that you guys have requested. And that is going to be, one, vacuums. Show you how to do those so that we can all maintain a tight, V-taper, strengthened, well-postured core. Two, body hair removal. That's right, a video on how to rid yourself of those unwanted noodle hairs. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Boom, baby. I've been